G'day, welcome to Partakers and our Easter 2018 series where we are looking at the death and resurrection of that most extraordinary man of history, Jesus Christ. Today we are going to look at Jesus' last teaching before he goes to the cross to die. But now I am going back to the Father who sent me, and none of you ask me where I am going. You are very sad from hearing all this. But I tell you that I am going to do what is best for you. That is why I am going away. The Holy Spirit cannot come to help you until I leave. But after I am gone, I will send the Spirit to you. In these last few chapters of the Gospel of John, before Jesus is crucified, Jesus is saying goodbye to his disciples and giving them some final teaching before he departs. Several times the Gospel writer records that Jesus has told them he is going away. Let's look together now at what Jesus teaches his disciples. The first thing is Jesus teaches them that his disciples must bear fruit for the kingdom. Reading from John chapter 15 and verse 1 to 2. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. As usual, Jesus uses Old Testament language. For in the Old Testament, the nation of Israel is often seen as a vine. However, as a vine, Israel had not produced fruit that God had expected, as explained in Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. With Jesus describing himself as the true vine, the implication is clear that the nation of Israel was but an imperfect precursor to his perfect self. With Jesus as the vine, all believers are the branches, and all believers draw spiritual nourishment from him. As part of this nourishment, sometimes pruning is required. Cleansing is also required in order that fruit be born from the Christian disciple. This cleansing is through regular confession of sin and partaking of Holy Communion, as explained in the foot-washing scene, of John chapter 13. To prove to others they are his followers and his disciples, Jesus tells them they are to continue loving him and also to sacrificially love others joyfully. By doing these things, which is now their mission statement, these disciples will bear much good fruit for God's greater glory. And the same is true of us today if we are truly Christian disciples. Our second teaching from Jesus is that disciples will suffer for the kingdom. John chapter 15 verse 18 If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. Having spoken of love and bearing fruit, Jesus now declares a warning in the context into which he is sending his disciples. We learn from this passage that opposition to Jesus' message is unavoidable. The first opposition that we learn about is that of the old nature attacking the new nature. Christian disciples, Jesus says, were called out from the world. Christian disciples upon conversion belong to a different place and are heading for a different place. Secondly, this opposition is to be expected simply because of who Jesus is. Christian disciples share in the life of Jesus, 
And the way the world treats Jesus is the way the world treats all his disciples. And thirdly, opposition comes from revealing evil. Jesus, as light of the world, exposed evil and sin through his words and works. At the beginning of his ministry, Jesus commanded all those who would follow him to also be lights of the world. This is done by consistently ensuring that our works and words match our lifestyle and that no hypocrisy will be found. Opposition brings persecution, and regularly throughout history, Christian believers have been persecuted for their faith in Jesus. In our own time, perhaps the most persecuted century of all. Being a Christian is not an easy decision, but it is worth it. It is also endurable because of three things. God still remains Lord God despite all. We share in Jesus' own sufferings and therefore have fellowship with him. And by being persecuted, it shows that we do indeed belong to him. The main reason all opposition can be endured is because the Christian disciple is not alone. God the Holy Spirit witnesses with the Christian disciple, not as a supplementary person filling a perfunctory role, but rather as the pioneer going out to testify about Jesus ahead of the Christian disciple. And the third bit of teaching is that disciples will have resources in the kingdom. The first resource that Christian disciples have, as we have already seen, is the Holy Spirit, the one who lives within us, sent to be with us. After all, he is the real evangelist. In conjunction with him, the Christian disciple has three resources to use, proclaiming, counselling and discipling. Proclaiming. This is the proclaiming and elucidating work about Jesus that the Holy Spirit performs. The Holy Spirit testifies about Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection. If Jesus did not go back to glory and the Holy Spirit was not sent, then the pioneering work of the Holy Spirit will be missing from evangelism and mission. Not only does the Holy Spirit direct people to Jesus, but take them to him. And our second one is counselling. As well as proclaiming about Jesus, the Holy Spirit speaks to people's hearts personally, one to one. This signifies the intimacy between the Holy God and the believer. The Holy Spirit convinces people hearing of God's word of three things, their own sin, their separation from a holy and righteous God, and also in regards to the judgment of Satan and all who follow him. In these three things, a person is led to the cross of Christ in order to confess their sin and the need of Jesus Christ and the salvation only he can and is able to provide. And our third resource is discipling. Once brought to faith, the Holy Spirit performs several tasks for the twelve disciples. He will guide them into all truth and develop what is coming in the future. The New Testament is the product of this work and that through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. For the Christian disciple today, the Holy Spirit helps them to apply the Bible in their life in order that Jesus Christ be glorified. That is the aim of discipling and being discipled. And our second resource which is available to the Christian disciple is Jesus himself. Jesus' presence, Jesus' provision, and Jesus' position. Jesus' presence. Yes, his very presence. The twelve disciples will experience sorrow and loss when Jesus is crucified and dead. But after the resurrection, their sorrow will turn to great joy similar to the exceeding joy after the pains of childbirth. Christian disciples today also have Jesus' presence with them, particularly when engaged in doing the work 
of an evangelist. And Jesus' provision, not only his presence, but also Jesus' provision. Through answered prayer, joy abounds. Prayer is going to be of prime importance for the twelve disciples, as it is a way to ensure unabated joy. Joy even amidst suffering and trouble. And position. Finally, not only Jesus' presence, Jesus' provision, but also look at Jesus' position. Jesus has overcome the world, and nothing can prevail against him. If you are with Jesus, nothing will prevail against him, and he will protect you, provide for you, and be with you in all you do as you submit yourself to him. Whether in the bad times or the good times, Jesus will be with you. But you need to ask him to be with you and to rely upon him fully. If you're going through bad times now and don't know this Jesus yet, then ask him to be with you. What have you got to lose? Thanks for joining us today on Partakers. Come back every day to www.partakers.co.uk where there is something uploaded as an MP3 to help you as a Christian disciple in the 21st century. Our books are also available at pulptheology.co.uk and on Amazon. See you later. Dave Roberts.